Hey, everybody. Welcome. Today is March 7th. This is the KCP community meeting. If you uh, are just joining us, we have an issue in our GitHub for this. So I will paste a link into the Meet chat. If you would like to add any items to the agenda, please feel free to do so. And uh, we do try to use raise hand in Google Meet. So if you uh, are interested in chatting, please hit the raise hand button, and I'll do my best to moderate. And uh, if there's anybody who is new to KCP, new to the meeting this week, and you would like to say hello, please feel free to hit the raise hand button and introduce yourself. If not, that's OK, but I'll, uh, I'll pause here and see if anybody does want to say hi. Not seeing any hands. I'm, I'm new. I'll introduce myself. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Adam. Uh, so I'm uh, I'm Adam Knofsky. I work over uh, on the Ansible project, and uh, I've actually stumbled on KCP uh, because we're looking at using it in a CI uh, system we're building for our upstream users, and uh, it's it's a pretty cool tool. And now I'm here. So <laughs> that's excellent. And I got a, a David wanted me to demo something. Uh, I have an installer that I've built. Uh, with Ansible that I've been using locally um, that can build and stuff that might be useful and I can show you uh, later. So if you have time, more than happy to show you how to use it. That would be awesome. Thanks. OK, um, so Andy, you have nominated Mike to preview KCP Edge Edge placement. So um, Mike, are you ready to show something? Yes, I am. Um, I can go through, for those of you who haven't seen it otherwise, uh, our thoughts on uh, an interface for the uh, edge placement problem. So uh, as you know, we do have this uh, group working on uh, edge multi-cluster. Uh, it is a distinct problem from TMC. Uh, let me try and share here and uh, see if I can uh, go briefly through that. I'm just thrashing over here to the actual interface. OK, let's start with that and then go back to the meeting and try to share my screen. Uh, let's see here. Present entire screen. Let's see if that'll work. Uh, share. Um, Chrome. OK, let's see. Um, sharing my screen. OK, so. We can see it. All right. And let me make it a little bit bigger. All right. So um, so in the in the uh, Edge MC repo, we do have a package for APIs. We have an API group called Edge. Uh, and in the V1 Alpha 1, you will find uh, Edge placement. Um, so the idea here is that this is, you know, we started with the TMC placement. and um, made the changes that we think are appropriate for Edge. Uh, I will say just sort of qualitatively, the um, the biggest one is that it is multicast rather than any cast. So like the TMC placement, uh, it has uh, what I call a where predicate that um, selects amongst possible, uh, in, in our case, we call them edge clusters, uh, or my, I may speak more generally of destinations. Um, and actually, this is in particular in service, uh, we're doing a proof of concept um, that is deliberately limited in scope. Uh, we're not exploring all of our ideas, but we are exploring some of them. Um, and this multicast is definitely one of the ideas we are exploring. One of the things we're not exploring is uh, the possibility of multiple edge clusters in one edge location. Um, we do have a more particular usage of vocabulary here. Um, and so, while TMC, I think, has a very general uh, potential use of the location concept um, or data structure or object type, um, we're actually poaching on the sync target and location from uh, TMC, uh, but we're giving a particular uh, interpretation to location, uh, one that's natural for edge. Uh, you, know, you, you think about uh, edge locations. Um, and in general, edge location can have multiple clusters. Um, but in this case, in this POC, uh, we're saying it's one-to-one. -one. So there's a one-to-one -one association between uh, sync targets and location in this POC. 
uh, and this interface thus at this uh, level of development. Um, anyway, so a uh, the where predicate, which, uh, so, uh, you know, as usual, an edge placement, right, it's got a, a spec and a status. And in the spec, there's a where predicate, which is a, uh, you know, like in TMC, it's a slice of label selectors um, over um, uh, location objects. Um, I'm not entirely clear on whether in, what, when in TMC, I think in TMC, it's, it's a selector on sync targets. But I think uh, it makes, well, it doesn't much matter here because it's uh, one to one, but I think it defined it to be a label selector on location objects. Um, and then as the spec also has, of course, uh, as, as it's it really this, this the placement object here is a binding between a what and a where, right? So the where is, is similar to the TMC placement, but it's multicast rather than any class, any cast of a what. We started with the this what TMC has, which is a label selector over namespaces, but we also want to be able to handle non-namespaced objects. So there is additionally a slice of references to non-namespaced objects or or selectors really, and those are in terms of those are identified by API group and resource and potentially some names or some label selectors to identify the individuals uh, of that API group. Uh, and resource. So that is really the what and the where in an edge placement. Um, the other thing I'll say about edge is the difference. Uh, let's see, somebody put their hand up and I'll get to you. Let me just say one more thing. Um, in TMC, what has to be transported is relatively bound and known at development time because in TMC, only the computation gets moved and everything else stays behind at the source of server. In Edge MC, we want to transport everything and produce self-sufficient edge clusters. So the set of things that have to be transported is not known at development time. Um, so I'll stop there and ask for questions. And uh, I can't quite see in this format who raised their hand. Let's see, who is that? That'd be David. Okay, David. Go ahead, David. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, I was just saying that, um, uh, yeah, what you mentioned about um, non, you know, being able to define the what um, per resource and not uh, per namespace. I think we already have an issue uh, for TMC as well because there was also the requirement to possibly point directly to some resources and not, uh, you know stick to the namespace scope in terms of, of defining the what uh, in, in the placement. So that might be interesting, you know, at least to have something, you know, um, converging or, or consistent here. And just wanted yeah. to mention that, that we have the same so, need on TMC, but we didn't implement it. So please do review what I've drafted here and tell me if you think that's appropriate or if you think something uh, different would be appropriate to converge on. Uh, yeah, well, I, we, we might, you know, take from what you 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 did as well. I mean, I don't know. Just just mentioning that the the same need exists on on both sides, obviously. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. We have another hand up, uh, Mengirdis. Uh, so I remember, in a, I think, two community meetings ago, we talked about a uh, capability to deliver the objects, but not to act on them in the KCP cluster. Like airbag, for example. Yes. And I was wondering, is this still a path to go? And was there any considerations to do something more like a Helm stuff, where you just object encapsulates a different object or list of objects and just deliver those? Like, I'm just interested. What's the thinking overall on this? Yes. That, like that's how. Yes, that's a very good question. It's a question that we've struggled with. Um, you know, we uh, I went back and forth uh, throughout last year on this. Uh, it is definitely a possible way to go. Um, you know, the the way I characterize it is well, the way I would put it is, uh, you know, in Edge MC, you need some kind of a container for the description of the workload, and the question is, do you use as your container 
a KCP workspace, or in general, a I describe it as a denatured API server. Um, you know, that's one kind of path to go. And the other is to define a container object type. And uh, you can find other projects that do that. Uh, for example, ACM has defined a container object type. Uh, another way you can go is, uh, in some sense, delegate. So GitOps is all about saying, oh, well, the container is Git rather than uh, anything in Kubernetes. The, 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 um, so that's, that's another way you can go. And in fact, my first proposal for Edge MC last year was exclusively focused on GitOps. And I was proposing that we adopt Git as the container. And people said, well, that's great for some use cases, but not all. So I want something that is more generic and works with the whole Kubernetes ecosystem. So that's why I went with uh, the container is something that looks like a regular Kubernetes API server. Uh, and then the consequence of that is that it has to be denatured because it has to be only a container. It needs to not process the objects. It needs to just hold them because the actual activity on the objects needs to be happening in these independent self-sufficient self edge clusters, not in the central place that's holding the description. So is that a reasonable answer to, uh, to the question? Yeah, it makes sense. That wouldn't be my first option to do that, but I think it's like if there is some, is this what you're showing is the current architecture document or something? I could drop some ideas. So um, there is a, an outline of this POC um that is merged in the edge mc repo the, you'll find the, there's a docs folder that has a subfolder for this poc um we do not currently have um like a pr this discussing the overall design or architecture um i believe andy we do have do we have a mailing list here's on mute Yeah, I know it. There's the Edge him, Edge. Yes, we list. have a mailing list for that, okay. and we have our kcp-edge.io. I'll just add you to it now. Okay. And yeah. This is where all our docs are located that describe the interfaces and the and the uh, demonstration that we're planning. Cool. Okay, we'll not take more time. Move the conversation there. Okay. Um, let me move on to the status. So um, the status uh, right now is um, very preliminary and spare, um, just uh, tracking the generation of the spec and the number of um, locations that matched. Um, in general, the uh, problem of returning um, reported uh, state from the edge uh, extends well beyond this object. Um, you know, we have a fundamental problem in Kubernetes, um, which connects to the previous question, actually. The, the Kubernetes object types are defined on the assumption that for every object, it's basically going to have one running or used copy. Um, and you have to set, you know, for every uh, desired state, there's one reported state, and the, there's a status section that's whose data type is designed to report on one of them. Uh, but in this multi-cluster world where you're explicitly about this is a prescription for many of them, that data type is not appropriate. So part of the Edge MC problem that I'm not trying to present our answer for now uh, is how do we deal with these multiple reported states? I'll just say briefly, uh, there's kind of a two-part answer. One is you can try to return all of the reported states and keep them somewhere. Um, the kind of the in spirit uh, answer is a separate objects. So this POC has mailbox workspaces in the center. So for each edge cluster, there's a corresponding mailbox workspace in the center that has um, all the objects. And so the individual object reported state can appear in the center in the mailbox workspace objects. 
but back in the original description, which is not mailboxed, um, there has to be some kind of summary then. And so there's this issue of how do we prescribe the summary? How does, how does the user define what kind of summarization they want? I think it needs to be programmable. And what representation? How do we write a generic representation for this programmable summarization, for the results of this programmable summarization? Um, so that's more of the reported state answer, but I didn't want to get into that here. Um, okay, other uh, thoughts or comments? Is this in a pull request for comments, or is it already in the repo, Mike? Uh, yes, this interface is in the repo. Um, of course, it is all, you know, in some sense, in, in spirit, uh, you know, a draft in progress. Right? We're working on a proof of concept, so nothing here is carved in stone. Uh, it's all subject to commentary and revision. Um, but since it is not in a PR, uh, perhaps the best way to comment is uh, to the mailing list or to Slack. Sounds good. Thanks. Any other comments or questions for Mike? All right. Uh, if y'all do want to follow up, uh, as Mike said, Slack, just the KCP Dev channel and the Kubernetes Slack, as well as their mailing list. Thanks, Mike. Uh, next up is Lionel with a demo of installing Knative in KCP and a teaser for an upcoming API lifecycle feature. So over to you. Yeah. So that says, says David, right? Uh, as for a, for a demo. So I see uh, the pattern here with Adam uh, and, uh, and me now. All right. So let me show the, um, uh, give you a little bit of context. We'll show this one. Okay, so um, since last year, I've been like kind of uh, working on uh, exposing the Knative API in uh, in KCP, right? And uh, so we explored like uh, there are like uh, three ways of doing it. One is you have like a Knative cluster, and uh, you use a sinker to uh, expose the uh, Knative API. Uh, so that's very simple. This works very well. Uh, the second solution is kind of the late binding solution where you start first with um, installing the Knative API in uh, a workspace uh, and then um, and then you bind uh, to a Knative cluster, right? So when you do the binding, a placement, uh, you place it to a Knative cluster. Uh, this is it's a good scenario when uh, like uh, you want to reuse the Knative uh, or any uh, controllers without having to make them uh, KCP aware. Uh, so that you can imagine like, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you understand the idea, right? Uh, and then the last part is, uh, so it's the, uh, the, cl the, the cluster as a service kind of scenarios where you give uh, only KCP uh, to the uh, service provider and the service provider install the Knative inside, uh, inside the KCP. So I'm going to demo just this part, this one, right? This is the hardest part because uh, uh, Kenitiv has so many uh, manipulates very low level um, um, Kubernetes objects like pods and endpoints, right? So let me switch to, uh, I will stop sharing this. Bring back to, uh, in, Chrome, you cannot just act, oh yeah, window maybe. Okay, that sounds good. You should be VS, you should see VS Code now, right? Yes. Yeah. All right. Is that like um, big enough? Yeah. It looks good. Okay, thanks, Maria. Okay, so uh, I have this guide. Uh, so that's um, so. I'm going to show how we install Knative, right, uh, in KCP. Uh, for that, you need a special branch uh, that uh, supports upsyncing um, endpoints, right? The branch from uh, David. Uh, 
Uh, so what I did is I already started KCP, uh, enabling the KCP Synchro Tunnel uh, feature. Uh, this is because we need to have pod being uh, upsyncing to um, to KCP, right? Uh, so this is like running uh, on top. Then in the middle would be my uh, KCP um, work, uh, terminal, what I call it. And so the first thing as a native uh, service provider, the thing you can do is to create workspace like a native. That's simple enough. Um, then what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to set up like a, a P cluster. So I, on the bottom terminal, I have like a, a can cluster running. Um, I'm going to need uh, a let. Uh, and I uh, checked out the uh, the branch. I uh, I pushed the uh, the image on this cluster. And uh, so back to the KCP terminal. I will create a sync target configuration. So in here, uh, I need a couple of resources to be uh, synced to um, uh, to the physical cluster, uh, like pod destruction budget policy, um, auto scaling endpoint and pods, uh, because all this is thing that uh, Kinetic creates. Uh, and I also enable the uh, KCP sync up channel uh, feature at this level, right? So now I can create, uh, so apply the same target, so register the, the same target in KTP. And if I look at the status of my same target, it's true, so it's good, right? Um, so the last thing I need to do in, uh, in preparation for this uh, workspace is to bind uh, the deployment and the services because that's something that can be uses, right, um, as part of the installation. All right, so now my workspace is kind of ready, and I'm ready to um, install Kinetive. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is to install the CRD. And that's installing the CRD in my workspace, in the Kinetive workspace. You can do, take a look at it, and you see, <laughs> And we see that there is only in here, only the Kinetive or the Kinetive service, right? The Kinetive service. The one that is interesting for us is actually the, uh, the last one, the serving. That's the main one. All right, so that's verify. And then now I'm ready to install the um, Kinetive itself. So actually it's Kinetive serving, it's not eventing, which is, uh, a different piece, different beast. Um, all right. So this is like uh, it's creating like a bunch of uh, cluster roles, services, controllers, uh, config map, uh, services, but description, a lot of things, right? Um, the only thing that doesn't install here is the uh, the the horizontal post I don't know yet why, but you know, that's something I need to investigate at some point. Uh, all right, so now uh, going back to the, um, um, sorry. So going back to the um, um, endpoint, uh, synchronization of endpoint. So what David did is um, if you add an annotation on, um, on a service, uh, and this annotation is called upsync derived uh, resource and, and you give the name of the resources that you want to upsync, then the derived uh, resources are going to be upsyncing to the uh, to the KCP uh, workspace, right? So in this case, uh, can this service install the service that is called activator service? And uh, can it, one of the Kinetive controller checks that the endpoint of this service is uh, ready is there to to you know acknowledge that this service is actually uh, uh, ready. So I'm going to annotate this service. And if I go now, if I go to the Kubernetes, can it be? Uh, 
uh, that's my space where I install Knative. I have the uh, the activator, and I have the activator service over here, right? And if I do a get endpoints, ah, maybe I waited a little too long. Here I should see the activator service endpoints. Okay, that's demo time always. Um, activator service. Yeah, it's here. So maybe there was a timing issue because this should have worked. That's maybe one of these things. Maybe this one. Okay, so probably I'm not going to debug this online. Okay, that's a one one. Uh, anyway, so David, maybe there is a bug somewhere because I didn't do this uh, fast enough. Can can we retry? Maybe searching for the endpoint. Maybe if it all this is ready. Mm -hmm. Actually, not showing is ready. Yeah, this is okay. This is uh, all uh, available. Um, okay, I was just confused by the zeros. Yeah, the zeros, I don't know. I mean, this is, I think it's a prime with, um, I have it at the end. Uh, yeah, right. it's, it's a replica. Problem. Yeah, it's a replica it's set by default to zero, I believe. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's related to the fact that for now we don't bring back to KCP the default values or the values set by admission controllers on the uh, on the physical cluster side. It's it's part of an issue you have to we have to tackle. All right. So let me do something like this. Maybe I can do quickly delete the um better service and I'm going to reinstall this. Right, and then I'm going to do the annotation right away. See if it's it doesn't really want it. Okay. Well, okay. Let's see for the next one. So let's continue and let's see if it's working for the uh, the second one because uh, we have the same issue for the. Uh, for the networking layer. So uh, can you give you have like different plugins for the network? Uh, so I'm going to install, uh, let me open that. I was looking for that. I'm going to install these, do the annotation, set the annotation. Right. And if I go to the story system, I think it's called. Yeah, so there is like an issue somewhere. Maybe it crashed. Ah, you yeah, know, it's there. See, it's coming. But well, this one is working. So I don't know for the other one why it's not, but uh, that's fine. Okay, so next. Um, uh, so we have a bunch of. Uh, Admission controllers, uh, they are all service based uh, admission controllers. I didn't change this, and KCP does not support that, so I need to delete this. Admission controllers. All right. And I'm going to tell Kennedy uh, that I'm using Cori as my ingress. Oh, I know why now. Okay, that's something different. Uh, and um, I can verify that Cori is working. You know, I'm in the next space actually, so I don't need to do anything special, but okay, so it's, I have my pod available. So now it's done. Um, I have like a 
in theory, can it have uh, installed uh, besides this um, um, small problem? And uh, so I'm ready now to deploy the first uh, KNT service. Uh, so this is like a very minimal uh, KNT service. Uh, actually, this is not really needed. Uh, the only thing I need to add is compared to the regular um, service, minimal service, is this annotation because I disable the uh, mutation, the actually defaulting. Uh, um, webhook and a uh, mutating webhook, whatever. And uh, I also need to tell, um, uh, you know, KCP to uh, upsync the uh, the endpoints, right? Uh, that's done this way. Uh, so if I do this, all right, the service is created, and at some point. <laughs> At some point, this will become ready, right? Uh, but it's not going to work now because the um, uh, because of the uh, the issue uh, I had before. Um, so, um, any questions so far? I'll probably get somewhere. Maybe if you want to take a look um, while we move on to some other topics, then if you can figure out what's going on, uh, we can circle back and show the rest of it. Yeah, sure. That works. OK, David, go ahead. Maybe just to comment about um, you might wonder about you know this requirement to add um, uh, an annotation to upsync the endpoints. Um, the, the, the point of this is mainly that we don't want to by default, upsync derived objects like endpoints in any case, because that would really, you know, add many unnecessary objects at the KCP side. Uh, on the other hand, um, finally, we would not have to add those annotations uh, manually, uh, because, uh, you know, in, in with the whole picture, we could do that with a coordination controller. The whole picture, I just wanted to, 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 to provide it as well is mainly that um, you would have an API export having the, the corresponding CIDs of Knative, you know, but as an API export. And you obviously would have, um, when you bind to the S, this API export, you would also bind um, um, to an API export that is, um, you know, joined to, to a coordination controller that would obviously look at the corresponding services and add this annotation uh, uh, automatically. So uh, the, the whole point of having API exports with permission claims um, uh, coupled with coordination controllers is that you can have, you know, a complete uh, behavior that uh, gathers both APIs and possibly add some some specific behavior on on those apis like adding this um this directive in the annotation and provide an overall uh you know consistent experience for for kinity for example so i mean we have to keep in mind that we would not have to add this annotation by hand uh, finally thanks go ahead Paolo. Sorry. So yes, I have a question on this derived object. How do you recognize that as a derived object on the downstream cluster? Is that because of uh, owner relationship or something like that? No. In fact, the, the annotation is. I mean, uh, at least in the in the pull request, it's not merged for now. But the annotation is is quite generic uh, because it's part of sort of part of the API internal. But um, as for knowing what is a derived object, there is no, for now, uh, you know, generic mechanism. There is a specific here because it's, you know, endpoints are standard cube objects. There is a, um, a controller in the sinker downstream that mainly, you know, watches services and endpoints. And when it finds an endpoint, it looks if the corresponding service has been synced from, from KCP. And if it's the case, it will check this annotation and mark it for upsync. So, I, for, 
Yes, sorry. Go on. Right, but so this is uh, right now is uh, specific to the particular use case. It's not something that can be generalized uh, for other I, I, Yeah, I don't think it can be generalized. I mean, completely based on on refs. I mean, it's it's more complicated than that, and uh, usually tied to you know specific use cases of the of of the user. But but um, obviously there there is some follow up to do in order to allow um you know up syncing uh for other type of objects and allow opt-in into up syncing other type of objects and then this would be the the responsibility of the third party to provide the the right agent on the physical cluster that would you know flag uh the the other objects uh instances to be up -synced. so we might in the future remove the the limitation of having of hard, hard coding the the type of objects that can be absinked. But what I think is that as for implementing the logic of what are the instances that will be absinked, this will in any case be, you know, something added on the physical cluster, possibly by some third party agent. That, does it make sense? Yeah, it does. I still uh, think in that use case we discuss uh, with uh, cross plane creating secrets and be able to absync them back. Yes, I, I think that there are many use cases that, you know, have a, a really dedicated logic and that it's quite hard to, you know, and possibly impossible to implement generally. But what we have to provide is enable the enablers to, you know, opt in to add additional resource types and possibly rules for, for marking instances for upsync and, and based on this, you know, machinery available machinery then then uh, you would be able to implement the right logic that uh, i mean would it would it answer your question or need yeah sure uh, i think we still have to continue you know, the discussion that the issue that i think uh, we open for for that sure yeah and 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 define what exactly are the needs uh, in terms of of thinking rules customization or you know extendability okay thank you you're um, so Lionel, did you want to talk about API lifecycle next? No, no, no just is just a teaser. Uh, so I have a, a demo, but I'm not ready for today. So uh, okay. next week. Yeah, no worries. Thanks. thanks. Uh, well, let me reshare my screen real quick. So I have a small update on documentation. So uh, I've updated the configuration for the docs so that we're using a much easier uh, internationalization library. Uh, you'll notice that what used to be where my cursor is next to the search bar where you could pick languages is gone. That's because we don't have any translations. So uh, as soon as we have at least one, uh, one file in another language, that will show up here. And if anybody is interested in trying to do any translations, uh, we'd love to have those contributions. And not too much else has changed, although um, one other thing that I did to mirror what we had in Hugo over to make docs is I added a little bit of code that will auto-generate this summary page for the section. And it takes the description from each of the uh, individual markdown files and renders it below, uh, which is kind of nice. And the last point I'll make is that if you are adding a new file uh, anywhere in the docs tree, the thing that you'll want to keep in mind is that the navigation bar over on the left is sorted based on file name, which was a surprise to me. I thought it would do it based on the, um, the title. So what that means is that you generally want to try and make sure that when you are uh, creating a new file, if you go into docs and then you go into content and then, for example, concepts, you'll want to try and make sure that the file name roughly matches whatever the um, first section heading is. So if we look at registering Kubernetes clusters using Sinker, you'll see that the uh, this title here, the um, 
single pound sign or the H1, this is what gets rendered on, on the left nav. So you just want to make sure that the file name is close to whatever's in here. So, um, so that it renders uh, roughly alphabetically. And that's all I have for docs. If anybody has any questions or wants to uh, know more, please feel free to reach out offline. And uh, next up, Andy with a good first issue for KCP Edge. Yes, next installment. Thanks, Andy. Appreciate that. All right. Let me know when you can see my screen. It's good. OK. So yeah, in our good first issue quest, uh, we've got a few new ones in there, mostly tied around documentation. As Andy showed, the kcp.io uh, page that he's got using Doxy, <clears throat> I was able to do something very similar with KCP Edge. I showed that last time we were on the call, so I won't go through that. But uh, some, of the, the, some of the newer items, we're trying to connect the dots for our quick start. And uh, let's see if I can show you here. So in our quick start now, we have a blog post that, that Paolo put together uh, with the help of others, and it's out there now. We've been promoting it pretty heavily, and it goes through the steps of how to install KCP and make it, uh, make it useful in the KCP Edge use case You know, for deploying one to many uh, instead of one to any. And so we'll be taking that in the next week or so and configuring it into something that looks more MD-like um, markdown. And in doing so, it mimics a lot of, you know, this is exactly what the KCP quick start looks like at this point. Um, but we need to add on to that, of course, what is specific to KCP Edge. And then we get into the weeds here. So um, some of the, the areas where we're experimenting, right, is in the Edge scheduler. So if somebody wanted to come in and take a look at what we're doing, uh, we're watching our analytics page. And we see, you know, the second most popular item here is the quick start guide you know uh no surprise so we want to kind of get people to link what we do in the in the quick start and we've already got a ticket open for that an issue open for that but to get them all the way down to the point where they can start experimenting with the edge scheduler we thought it might be a good idea or a good first step is to uh, create some kind of a make target that would install the items that were necessary and the components and to get you up and running so just wanted to leave that out there. If people are interested in tagging along, this is like kind of a low hanging fruit type of thing. Uh, we'd love to have your contribution. That's all I have is any questions. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I don't see any hands going up, so um, that is the end of the agenda for today. And uh, I'm going to propose that, given that we only have a couple minutes left until the official end of the meeting, that we skip the triage for today. And um, if there's time next week, we can resume then. So thanks, everybody, for joining. And we'll see you next time. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.